through. You're not looking for a pattern that says, all right, how do we build the greatest children's ministry? You're downloading, just like we did this past Sunday, with almost 400 kids out under the power of God. Just, I mean, they were massively, in last Sunday, I think as the Sunday before, just laid out under the power of God with the Holy Spirit. So you set the pattern. Without walls has always been a ministry of setting the pattern. We've always been a prototype ministry. It's our mantle. It's our call. It's our assignment. So we don't look for paths to walk down. We create paths. Look at somebody say, I'm a creator of destiny. I'm a creator of it. So that's the importance of government function. The number five, it has the authority to penetrate. So no, with an apostolic anointing, by the governance of God, it has authority, God-given authority to penetrate. In other words, it has an ability to pierce through veils of darkness and to go in areas that, that if you're not anointed for, you can't walk into. So it has an anointing to penetrate in places. Did everybody get it? Say, I got it, Pastor Paula. Because tonight's very important that you get it. So then if I say we're in a season of apostolic reformation, so we defined apostolic, what's reformation? Now, I've taught you for two and a half years about reformation, but I'm going to break it all the way down. Hebrews chapter 9, verse 6 through 10. Now when these things were thus ordained, the priest went always into the first tabernacle, accomplishing the service of God. But in the second went the high priest alone once every year, not without blood, which he offered for himself and for the heirs of his people. The Holy Ghost thus signifying that the way into the holiest of all was not yet made manifest, which is the first tabernacle was yet standing, which was a figure for the time then present, in which were offered both gifts and sacrifices that could not make him that did the service perfect as pertaining to conscience, which stood only in meats and drinks and divers washings and carnal ordinances imposed on them into the time of reformation. So he's saying there was a image of something, but until the time of reformation, because reformation would bring in the true, these things are what took place. It was just, it was like, it was a, it was an image. It was these things were ordained, but they would not be accomplished to set the fullness of what God had into the reformation. So to get a correct assessment of reformation, we must change the words of religious paradigm thinking. We've got to change it. So, so words that most often associate with moves of God, when you start thinking, what is God doing in the earth? We associate the words revival. We associate the words reconciliation. We associate the words restoration. Now, all those things I'm going to break down are part of it, but the, the true apostolic reformation, the true of what God is doing, because we're going into the year 2012, which is a very important year of government and of establishment. The trueness of what that is is going to be reformation. So, you, so what's the difference, Pastor Paula? Let's look at what reformation is not. Let's define it because we'll experience revival. We should always have reconciliation. We should be in restoration, which has been the move of the last decade. And then we should see now reformation. So let's define reformation by you having an understanding of the other things. Is that good? Habakkuk chapter 3, verse 2, it says, O oh Lord, I've heard thy speech and was afraid. Revive thy work in the midst of the years. In the midst of the years, make known unto the wrath. Remember mercy. Hosea chapter 6 verse 1 through 3 come let us return to the Lord so what's it say will let us do what guys all right one of the first things that always happens for revival and, and reformations much beyond revival but you can't have revival without having repentance so until you return to the Lord it means go back to where you missed it repent Change your ways. Return to the Lord. So come, let us return to the Lord. He's torn us to pieces, but he will heal us. Some of the stuff in your life, the devil didn't send it all. Some of it, the devil didn't send it all. Some of it, you, you should thank God for some of the things that you've gone through. Because it sets you up to be in a good, sovereign position. So it says he's torn us to pieces. But he will heal us. He has injured us, but he will bind up our wounds. Now, I know nobody's shouting right now, but it's good because I'm setting you up. I know nobody's doing cartwheels. They're not coming down and throwing an offering down. But I'm not going to give you Jesus' junk. I'm going to give you the word of the Lord right now. 
I'm going to show you where we are going and what we're doing. It says, after two days, he will revive us. On the third day, he will restore us, that we may live in the presence of the Lord. Let us acknowledge the Lord. Let us press on to acknowledge him. As surely as the sun rises, he will appear. He will appear and come to us like winter rains and like the water on the earth. Revive in the Hebrew means this, to keep, to leave, or to make alive. To let live, to nourish up, to preserve, to quicken, to recover life, to save and alive. Let me tell you when you need revival. When you get wearied, when you get wearied, you need revival. You need to be made alive. When you get dull, you need revival. When we as a nation gets dull, we need revival. When we as a people get dull, we need revival. We need something to liven us. You need to fall in love with Jesus all over again. You need to go back to your first works. Repent of your wrongdoings and just, just cry out unto the Lord. I need the life of God flowing through me. When you feel far and separated and like God's nowhere near, you need revival. And you can have personal revival right in your home. You're going to find out that this part, revivalists are different. Ultimately, I believe I've been born in this earth to bring forth the reformation. But I believe I will stand as a revivalist also. I've seen revival hit in many times and many seasons of my life. It's a quickening and enlivening to bring people into the presence of the Lord. It means to return to life, to become active again. Sometimes life just gets noisy and your spirit can get cluttered and you need a revival. That God just hits you there. We've had it here in the last two and a half years where you just see a move of God at certain seasons that create a momentum that bring us all to a place that you just feel alive again because life has a way of just kind of wearing you down any of you own those gins what are they called ginsu knives what are they called ginsu ginsu anybody own a ginsu knife we can't afford Gensu knife. What kind of knife y'all own? I know some kind. And you get a knife sharpener because it gets dull. You go to cut and it doesn't cut. So you put that thing in a knife sharpener. That's what revival is. It's your knife sharpener. And sometimes we just need to be sharp again. How many of you just need to be sharp in some things? That's revival. So I already believe that revival has come, will continue to come. The next thing is reconciliation. Second Corinthians chapter 5, verse 16 through 21. So from now on, we regard no one from a worldly point of view. Though we once regarded Christ in this way, we do so no longer. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has gone and the new has come. All this is from God who reconciled us to himself through Christ and gave us the ministry of reconciliation. So we were what? Reconciled to Christ. And now what kind of ministry do you have? A ministry of what? Okay, so watch this. Let me get, let me help grow you up real quick. You were reconciled to Christ, right? And I'm going to break that down. That means really you were brought back through redemption. You were purchased. So now you're in right standing with God. So now you have a ministry of, which means you don't have a ministry of division. If you ever see anybody dividing in the kingdom of God, a scatter is a division to God and it's an abomination to God. A gather brings healing. Jesus said, you're either for me or you're against me. You either scatter or you gather. There was no in between. You don't scatter a portion and gather another portion. The family of God, like it or not, people that talk in tongues, people that don't talk in tongues, they're all still part of the family. Oh, please don't make me go there. Black, white, yellow, red, purple, and polka dot. They're all still part of the family. Tall, short, skinny, and fat. They're all still part of the family. Look at somebody say, it's all up in the mix. So when you have been reconciled, you now have a ministry of what? You have a ministry of reconciliation. That God was reconciling the world, world to himself in Christ, not counting men's sins against them. And he has committed to us a message of reconciliation. Now, I wish I had time to work this because if God reconciled you to him, not counting man's sin against him, and now you have a ministry of reconciliation, are you supposed to count man's sin against them? Right, your, your ministry of reconciliation. And the only way some people make themselves feel big is to make other people feel, yeah. All right, so are they reconcilers? 
No. So ministry of reconciliation means this. If God saved me, then God can save you. If God woke up and put breath in my body this morning and is doing a work in my life, then who am I to pluck the pole out of your eye and worry with the beam in your eye when I've got, or, or to pull out the speck in your eye, excuse me, when I've got a pole protruding from mine. So you have a ministry of what? Look at somebody say, I've got a ministry and I didn't even know it. Look at somebody say, I've got a ministry. You've got a ministry of reconciliation. I'm going to drive this till you get it. So, and he has committed to us the message of reconciliation. We're therefore Christ's ambassador as though God were making his appeal through us. So what are you of God? Is this just for Pastor Paula? This is for who? It's for you. So you're an ambassador, right? A delegated representative of another kingdom, correct? We all like to say that. I'm an ambassador of the Most High God. Well, this is the scripture where you're getting it from. You're an ambassador for Christ. As though God were making his appeal through us. So God is using your life to make his appeal to the world. So your life, you are the life that God uses, the living epistle, to make his appeal. So God says, so that's why you always show, look, don't, that, that, that's why I say be an open book. Because if God makes his appeal through you, people cannot wrestle with the anointing of God on your life. Either God's with you or God's not. And if God's with you, they can't fight the presence of God on your life. So they can argue all day long. Well, he don't deserve it. She don't deserve it. If you knew she did this, he did that. But here's the point. God makes his appeal through your life. You say, yeah, guess what? I did all that and more. And because of the wonderful blood covenant of Jesus Christ, I have been forgiven. He has positioned me. I have repented. I have renounced. I have rejected. I have shut that door. And now I am the righteousness of God. And people look at your life and they say, well, if God can do it in Celeste, if God can do it in Diane Noah, then God can do it in me. He makes his appeal through your life. Look at somebody say, I didn't know I had such a powerful ministry. So God made him who had no sin to be sin for us so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. Reconciliation means to exchange. It means atonement, to make different. To reconcile means to settle or to resolve, to bring back into friendship. So this move of God is perpetual. So I would, I would call this a move that the reconciliation is that all would come to repentance. So revival is make us alive again. But reconciliation is continual. It's a ministry that's ongoing forever and ever. We all have a ministry of reconciliation. Then there's restoration. Joel chapter 2 verse 25. And I will restore to you the years that the locust has eaten, the canker worm and the caterpillar, the palmer worm, my great army which I sent among you. So restore means to make amends or to mend. It literally means to put back into existence, to bring back to a former condition, to give back and to put something back in possession again. So restoration, the etymology, Corey, means back again. It means back again. So God says, I'm going to bring you back to your original intention. And the original intention is not before you sinned, not before something, an event occurred in your life. The original intention is who God created you to be. We're going back all the way to where God said, I give you dominion, be fruitful, multiply where he speaks over you his greatness so you're back again you're back to who you really are and who you really are if you ever saw your real self in him you live and you move and you have your being if you ever saw how bad you really are you wouldn't sit there and shake against the enemy you would stand up in your rightful position take your authority slay a giant Come on, you would, you would cut its head off at the shoulders. You would move into your promised land. It's kind of like the elephant that's been set free. You know what they do to train elephants? It's called they kill their, or they break their spirit. They chain them up and they beat them so bad that their spirit gets broke. And when their spirit's broke, they no longer chain them up. They can put a little tie, a little rope around them. That elephant will never go anywhere, will never do anything because it's got a broke spirit. Well, the devil lives alive. 
liar. The devil brings events into your life. He brings fear into your life. But we uproot every tree that has been planted in your life of fear. Every seed of bitterness, anger, and rejection is broken by the blood of Jesus right now. Whatever the enemy wanted to plant, that it would come to the full maturation or harvest in your life is cut down in the name of Jesus and by the blood covenant right now.